What is up, guys? It looks like we are live. Thank you for joining us for another Tuesday raw feeding live Q&A here on the Dog Dad channel with yours truly, the Dog Dad, your raw feeding coach, creator of the Raw Feeding 101 course, the book, this YouTube channel, of course, obviously, because I'm the one sitting here doing this live stream with you. But welcome to a very special live Q&A for a couple of different reasons. One, I want to talk about a few things that are a little off topic from what we normally talk about, meaning it's not specifically, you know, food based. It's more about our, I guess you could say, our culture as a raw feeding community. And it is also my birthday tomorrow. So it makes that a little bit, a little bit special. And I also, if you're watching on the live stream, if you're watching this on the replay, which I know a lot of you will be because that's where most of the views come from. But if you are watching this live, we are going to be giving away a free audiobook copy of the Raw Feeding 101 book. So if you want to have a chance to win this, go ahead and stick around until the end. And I'll try and mention that again for those of you guys that triple in. But we're going to talk about a few different things today. But really quickly, just to let you guys know, to let it be out of the way, you guys can ask questions about it if you want to, but I get messages about it uh, every day, especially across the last you know, like 30 day period. Um, the discount on the Raw Feeding 101 course is gone after tomorrow. So to Today and tomorrow the last day. I've had some people message me and ask just to make sure. And yes, today and tomorrow are the last day. So tomorrow being my birthday, that is the last day. So that's out of the way. Let's move forward from that one. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask them, but there you go. That's it. And let me go ahead really quickly, which I would have done before if I was super professional, right? Let me go ahead and bring up the chat here really quickly. I have no idea. Hey, you. Horace. Horace. Stop. I have no idea why you're looking on the carpet, but I don't want you doing it. Yeah. yeah I know you're cute, but I still don't want you licking the carpet. No. Mm -mm. No. Okay, so now we got our chat up. We'll pop that out. Okay. And now we have our chat up. That's awesome. All right, looks like Christine is here. Sarah is here. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see. Christine, thank you very much for being an editor for the Raw Feeding 101 book. You are amazing. Sarah, thank you for being a course student and a book reader. And Jamie, thank you for being a course student. Uh, let's see here. Jamie says, got my book back on Friday in the mail. I love it, Jamie. Uh, Jamie sent me her copy of Raw Feeding 101 so that I could sign it for her and it took me forever and I finally sent it back. So I'm glad that you got it, Jamie. That's a good thing. Uh, Larry, I think that this is your first time here. Nice to see you, Larry. Good evening to you as well. Let me bring this over here so that it doesn't look like I'm looking quite as far away from you guys. Uh, and Christine is saying happy birthday. Thank you so much, Christine. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and take some uh, pre-birthday coffee swigs here. And we got seven viewers here, guys. All right, if you are here and you haven't already, I want you to click the thumbs up button on the video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and click that little bell. But most importantly, I want you to drop a comment so that I know that you are here, especially if you are a first time viewer, like I think Larry is, because I don't recall ever seeing Larry in the live stream before. And we'll give it just a few minutes before we start moving on to topics. But again, for you guys that are just coming in, we're going to talk about a few different things today. And at the end of the live stream, and I actually have a note here to do it so that I don't forget like I did last time in the Raw Feet 101 group, we're going to give away a free copy, audiobook copy of the Raw Feeding 101 book. So if you're an Audible reader, if you're an you know, audiobook reader period. It's coming from Audible. So if you don't like Amazon, I'm sorry, but that's where it's coming from. Uh, we're going to give away a free copy of the audiobook for Raw Feeding 101. So stick around until the end if you want a chance to win that guy as a happy birthday to me, to you guys, I guess. I don't know. But we're going to talk about some weird, not necessarily weird, but just not food specific stuff today that is still based with. Uh, raw feeding because I think it's some stuff that we need to talk about a little bit more than we do because we're really focused on food, which we should be obviously because that's what this whole thing is based off of. 
but there's a few more things to it that I think we should focus on. Uh, let's see here. Christine says, what will cause a dog to be, I think I'm missing something. Okay. Yeah. All right. I had to open up my window a little bit more there to be able to see everything. Uh, what will cause a dog to eat every night, then throw up after every meal, not just one, but all of the dogs? That's weird. That sounds like if they're eating the same thing, what, if that happened here, my guess would be that it would be something that all of them were eating that was making them sick. Like maybe some, you know, beyond spoiled meats, or maybe they all got into the the same dirty puddle or, you know, who knows what, but you got to look at, if I was in your position, obviously I can't give you diagnosis info because I'm not a veterinarian or a vet tech or anything like that. But if I was in your position, I would be looking at what were all of them exposed to and what are all of them exposed to that they have in common that could cause vomiting and start taking those things away one at a time to see what's what's causing it and if it gets bad enough then it may warrant vet visits but that's what i would do if i was in your position uh <clears throat> let's see we got cloud cc i think that this is your first time here as well uh claudia from thailand good morning yes nice to see you claudia i am i yes i am it's let me guess let me see if i'm right here in the time of year it's is it 8 12 p.m or excuse me, 8, 12 a.m. your time, Clow. I used to work with some people in Thailand, and so I had to memorize the uh, time differences. And I think, if I'm right, you guys are 14 hours ahead of where I'm at. So is it 8, 12, or 8, 13 a.m. now where you guys are at, Clow? Uh, let's see here. And welcome to the live stream for the first time. Alyssa is saying, on our walk before I start human dinner, still listening, not... Not so much watching, but for obvious reasons. Yeah, keep your eyes on the road, so to speak. You never know when that crazy dog or person is going to come around the corner. So, yes. Thank you for listening, though, Alyssa. I appreciate that. And I totally dig that because I do that all the time. I watch lots of videos and YouTube videos and stuff like that. But nine times out of ten, I'm just listening to them. <laughs> so I totally get that. Uh, Christine is saying, I keep changing food each night. Maybe it's something that is getting into their water. Are they, they being exposed to, you know, a new dog or something like that in the neighborhood that's possibly making them all sick? Maybe it would be a good idea to at least bring one of the dogs into the vet and say, hey, this is going on. Can you tell me if there's any type of, you know, infection that's happening that maybe all of them have? So that's where I'd be going at that point. Klaus saying 7, 12 a.m. Oh, it's only 13 hours ahead, not 14 at this time of year. Oh, so close. I bet that it was going to be 14 after the time change, though. Oh, so close. But I almost got it. I almost got it, Klaus. Uh, Let's see here. All four paws is saying hi. All four paws. I don't know if this is your first time here or not. It may be or it may not. But either way, welcome to the live stream. And... Thank you very much. Make sure you click that thumbs up and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. So let's go ahead and start on our topics here. And I'm not picking up my phone to start checking text messages and stuff. I've got my notes here that I want to talk about today. Uh, let's see here. We already talked about the course discount being done in two days. We talked about the uh, book giveaway at the very end of the live stream. Okay. So here is uh, all four pauses saying it's not. I've been here a couple of times. Awesome. Then welcome and thank you for coming back again. So here is the first topic. And by the way, the whole point of these live streams, so th for those of you guys that are here the for the first time, not like all four pauses because they've been here several times apparently. <laughs> the whole point of these is to give you guys some information and give you guys the opportunity to ask questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you that I don't know the answer and I'll try to send you somewhere that does have the answer. Uh, maybe that's perfectlyrawesome.com or maybe it's you know a book like a Novice's Guide to Raw Feeding for Dogs from Kimberly uh, from keepthetailwagging.com. Maybe it's another raw feeding group or wherever it is. I'll try and send you guys somewhere that can give you the info. Maybe it's the two crazy cat ladies because I know zip squat about cats, but we'll try and get you the info. So if you have questions about fresh food, raw feeding, etc., drop them into the comment section 
and we will address them. But while we wait for those questions to come in, I'm gonna start going over some topics that I wanted to go over today. So the first topic that I wanted to talk about is <clears throat> approaching people to share information and what I think is the right way to do it. And what I'm talking about, just to kind of paint a picture of the scene that I'm you know, addressing is, you're in let's just use the really classic example because it's where this is coming from because this is where i see it because i run a raw feeding group raw feeding 101 that has you know almost eighteen thousand people in it you see somebody <clears throat> in a post and they are either doing something wrong or maybe they're missing something super crucial like maybe they're not feeding organ content or they're not feeding bone content or you know whatever the case may be they're they're missing something really crucial in in the diet and you don't want to necessarily be a dick about it to be blunt but you don't want them to keep doing that because you know that that isn't the best practice and you would like to share information with them and say hey um you know that's not right let's do this instead but you can't just do that you can't just comment. I mean, you can do it, but it's, you know, the dick move. It does not come across well. It doesn't get taken well. It comes as a criticism, as an attack, even though it's not. That's how the person getting those comments or those messages is going to receive them. So how what I think is if you see somebody that is doing something like that, you know, they're not feeding bone content or they're only feeding ground beef or they're not feeding organs or, you know, whatever the case is. If you see something like that, what I would almost say, if it were me, is to make a comment that is more open-ended, that lets them start the discussion. So let's look at the comment and then we'll look at the message. So if you're sending them a comment, you know, you're just commenting on the post that you're seeing. I would almost say something like, hey, you know, things are looking great. There are some changes that I would make if I was in your position and I would be happy to discuss it if you want to hear more. You know, even if the post is directly asking, uh, hey, does anybody see anything that I'm missing? What is it? If you come at it as you're missing this, 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 and this, and by the way, you suck. I mean, that's not what you're saying, but that's how a lot of people, even if they ask for that criticism, are going to take it, uh, especially if there's a whole lot of things that you would change. So what I would do is open up a discussion and let them begin to participate in that discussion. So again, saying, you know, they make a post saying, hey, am I missing anything? You comment saying, hey, it looks like you're doing great, but I would change some things, you know, giving them a positive and then saying I would change some things and then saying I'd love to talk more about it if you're open to the suggestions and then having them say if they're making that post and they're genuinely open to the criticism, then they're going to respond. They're going to say, yeah, what do you what do you think? Because there are some people that <clears throat> I've noticed over the years because we've been been two years, two years plus, something like that, that Raw Feeding 101 has been active in, and growing. And I've seen some people that make those posts, but they're not really wanting criticism or feedback. What they're really wanting is to just hear that they're doing awesome. They don't really want the criticism. And so sometimes these discussions get out of hand. So making a positive comment, saying that you would make some uh, changes, and that you'd love to talk more about it if they're open to those suggestions and open to a discussion and then letting them engage and say, hey, yes, I would love to hear more about, you know, what you would change in the diet that I'm feeding. That way, no one's getting upset, you know, no one's quote unquote being a dick or being perceived as a dick. <laughs> and you're educating somebody in a positive way and when they get to say i want this information they're going to be much less likely to you know be defensive against that information and think that you're only giving those suggestions to be a jerk and that you're you know 
quote unquote, holier than thou and you know everything. And let me tell you all the things that you're doing wrong because I'm doing them right. Just the psychological effect of them saying, I want to hear more about what you think I'm missing in my diet makes it a better conversation that they're going to use more of. So that's the comment end. If you see something though, that maybe you think warrants a message instead of a, a comment, you know, maybe it's a something that they may not want the whole world to see kind of a thing. Maybe like, Hey, um, I'm just feeding ground beef, you know, something like that. Uh, does anybody see anything that I need to be adding to the diet? You know, a post like that. And as somebody that's been doing it for a couple of years or something like that, or you've been, you know, you went through the raw feeding 101 course, or you bought Kimberly's book, or you've read every page on uh, perfectlyrawsome.com and you're like, there's a bunch of stuff missing here, but you don't want to seem like you're unloading on them and you're being a jerk, then maybe it's a better idea to send them a private message and say pretty much the same thing, but being a little more hey, there's a whole lot of stuff here that I would change, you know, again, starting positive. Hey, I think that it's great that you're trying to feed, feed fresh foods. I saw your post in the Raw Feeding 101 group or whatever group it is. And um, I want to, I want to help. And I saw lots of things that I would change again, if you're open to a discussion. So if you'd like to talk more about it, then, then let me know. And again, you're giving a positive, you're encouraging them saying, yes, I would change things and then leaving it up to them to say, yes, I'd like to participate in this discussion. Don't send them a five page, you know, five scrolls worth of paragraphs saying, here's all the things you're doing wrong. Because all that's going to happen when they see that is even if the information's right, even if on a subconscious level, they know that that information is probably right. The door is just going to slam shut because they're going to get defensive and they're not going to want to take advice from somebody that's being a dick. <laughs> I mean, at least to them, they're perceiving it that way. You know, you may not be, you know, being a dick, but that may be how they are perceiving it just because you asked for you being the poster, asked for some simple information. And then all of a sudden, some stranger sends you this five page message about, all the ways that you're doing everything wrong. I mean, it's really hard to open up and take that kind of information in a positive light and then use that info unless you have chosen to participate in that conversation. So let me go ahead and take a quick sip of some coffee here and then look at these comments that we're getting. Let's see here. Uh, Jamie said, I feel like you should make a video like that with all aspects in life. <laughs> People are just dicks most of the time and it sucks. By the way, happy birthday. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that. You know, I do think that I want to make um, a video about this and actually put it up onto the YouTube channel just as an exclusive topic video, uh, you know, with the, the black background and all that kind of stuff, just because not everybody likes these live Q&A type formats of videos. They just don't like sitting through videos that are that long. They want their information now, 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 which I totally get because those are the information videos that I watch online. Like it's really hard for me to look at a video where I'm looking for a specific piece of info and watch it if it's longer than five or 10 minutes long. I mean, 10 minutes is like, holy cow, 10 minutes. Like, dude, do you have any idea how busy I am and other people are? Like, so I get that. So I think that I do want to make a a topic specific video for the channel about this but not it's not there yet uh let's see uh do, 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 do. all four pauses saying my grandma just got a puppy and i'm helping them raw feed the puppy we tried to put three little pieces of raw chicken mixed into the puppy kibble and 20 minutes after feeding it the puppy throws it up that could be a whole lot of things the puppy could just have or and we tried it a couple of times one week apart one week apart each time they might just be really really sensitive they might have other issues going on they might have a chicken intolerance it could be a slew of of other things it could be that and i'm not saying that kibble and rod 
can't be fed together and that they don't mix. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that some dogs have such a sensitive stomach that having more than one thing in their stomach at a time doesn't work out. So the first step that I would try a couple of different things. We'll go with the two simplest things first. And if these don't work, then feel free to drop onto a, another live stream and we can talk about those as well or talk further about it. The first thing that I would try is feeding it separately. Maybe, you know, like the first meal of the day or the last meal of the day, something like that, because the puppy should be being fed, you know, at least three times a day throughout the day. But either the first meal or the last meal, something like that, I would try feeding just the chicken seeing what happens with that it is just having the chicken alone not being mixed with the other food is that easier on their on their stomach or does it make no difference and they still throw up if that happens if they still throw up <clears throat> then what i would do is i would try something else i would get away from the chicken and i would try something like turkey or if you have it available to you something like rabbit you know some other bland meat like that or blander meat like that, I guess I should say. And if that doesn't work, then I would try something completely on the other end. And I would try something that's a red meat, maybe try beef or maybe try a little bit of pork, something like that and see how they react to that. Just try and make it so that you are identifying whether or not it's the mixing of the foods that's the problem and trying to figure out if it's just the chicken that is causing the dog the problem. And also, it's never a bad idea to look into something like uh, probiotics, digestive enzymes, <clears throat> slippery elm bark, things like that, because they can really help with stuff like that, you know, vomiting, overall digestion, GI issues. So try those things. And if those things don't work, then hop onto another live stream or make a post in the Raw Feeding 101 group if you're a member in there. And if you're not, go and join. But Give those things a try. Let's see. Jasmine is saying, hey, hey, what's up, my friend? Hello, Jasmine. Nice to see you. Jasmine was yet another preview reader, pre-reader. -pre Before the book was released, she got a copy to read and go through and edit, and she made it that much more awesome. So thank you very much, Jasmine. I appreciate that. And by the way, since we've gone up to 14 viewers from the last time I brought this up at, you know, like seven, eight, nine viewers, something like that. At the end of the video, and I have a note so I don't forget this time, at the end of the video, we're going to be giving away a copy of the, an audiobook copy of the Raw Feeding 101 book. So if you want to have a chance to win that guy, stick around until the end. <clears throat> but I just wanted to say that for those of you guys that have just joined. Uh, and I do have a note right here in front of me to make sure that I don't forget because I did that last time in the Raw Feeding 101 group when I said that I was gonna do that. And that, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Hey, you, you, yeah, you, stop. Good, good boy. Oh crap. Refocus, thank you, thank you. Camera, camera, thanks for the focusing. Uh, let's see here. And we tried it a couple of times. Okay, I read that already. Jasmine is saying, what is your favorite cheat meal for your dogs? Like on days your twin nieces are born and you didn't thaw anything. Not that you ever have to do that because you're always prepped and ready to go. Uh, and then all four paws says, okay, thanks. I'll try it. Good. I'll pause. You know, sometimes, Jasmine, um, that does happen to where what happens the most often is exactly what you just said, where the day just gets away from us and we forget to pull stuff out before, um, you know, before it's going to have adequate time to defrost. Sometimes it gets really late in the day and it's like, Oh no, I totally forgot because you go to feed the dogs and you're like, Oh no. Oh no. Honestly, if it's really that bad and it's like, you know, if I try and defrost something right now, it's going to take until like 11 o'clock at night or something like that. What I will do is I will take, and this is not a regular thing, so nobody freaked out because, because I know this is not a balanced meal. I get that. I'm just not freaking out about it because they had a balanced meal the day before. They'll have a balanced meal tomorrow, and I'm not that worried about it. 
If that happens, what I will typically tend to do is take something like a pound of um, hamburger out of the freezer or turkey burger out of the freezer or something like that. Something that we've put into a Ziploc bag is flat, is going to defrost really, really fast and typically stick that in some hot water for 20 minutes or something and let it get pliable enough to where I can break it into two different pieces and then put that into a bowl with a couple of eggs from our chickens in the backyard and poof, you know, they've got some reproductive foods in, in the egg, uh, you know, one or two of them, depending on how I'm feeling that day. And they've got some really good, you know, amino acids and proteins and fats from the um, ground turkey burger or hamburger or whatever it happens to be. And they don't have completely empty stomachs. You know, if I really wanted to, I could just say, screw it and fast them but i don't like doing that unless i have to because i already intermittent fast them every day so they already only eat once every 24 hours so i don't like doing that unless i have to like they're sick or something so that's my cheat meal is defrosting a pound of hamburger or turkey burger something like that really quickly using some hot water for 20 minutes to make it pliable enough to break in half and then throwing that in a bowl with a couple of eggs for the dogs maybe with some bone broth if i've got it available and then poof we're done and that's that's cheat meal i guess you could call it and i i love that term cheat meal <laughs> All right, guys, keep dropping those raw feeding questions. Um, I think that I adequately covered what I think about the approaching people to share information with them aspect. Uh, I just, there's so many of you out there and I'm not talking about, you know, the influencers sharing type people like me and Kimberly and Ronnie and the two crazy cat ladies. Karen Becker, Rodney Habib, uh, I mean, Jasmine starting to share stuff as well. I mean, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the people that aren't creating content. There's so many of you <clears throat> that are out there that have so much good information to share that can be completely ignored or taken the wrong way if that approach to share the information isn't done right. And then that person doesn't get the info and ultimately it means that their dog is not getting uh, the best benefit of the fresh foods that they could. So keep in mind, if you need to rewind it after the live stream and rewatch that whole little segment that I went on, um, make sure that you're approach approaching people in a way where you're giving them a positive comment. They're saying, you're saying that there are some things that you would change and that you'd love to share those things if they're open to those suggestions or a discussion and then letting them engage letting them say, yes, I'm open to this information so that they'll actually absorb it and, and use it. Uh, let's see here. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, Amanda said, you didn't go over mine. I don't know what that means, Amanda. I don't know what that means. I don't see any other comments from you. So maybe your comment didn't post. The very first comment I see from you is you didn't go over mine. That's the very first comment. So if you had a question, feel free to drop it again, and I will see if I can answer it for you. Uh, let's see. Jasmine says, sounds like what their dinner is tonight. Ground turkey, chicken legs, boiled oatmeal, eggs, and sardines. I am so tired from hospital visits and driving and no sleep. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Seeing yours is even more balanced than mine was. <laughs> so kudos to you. I probably wouldn't even bother with the sardines and all that kind of stuff. It's just, here's some reproductive foods with your eggs, you know, complete foods like raw goat's milk, raw cow's milk, uh, eggs, those kinds of things. And here's something with some weight to it, like the ground burger. And there's your meal for the night, guys. Sorry, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have an unbalanced meal tonight. <laughs> and you're not gonna die and everything's gonna be just fine. Uh, let's see. All four pauses is saying, what are your three favorite things to feed your dogs? My three favorite things to feed the dogs. One that doesn't happen very often is whole prey type stuff. And it's mostly just personally, uh, they're getting lots of good stuff from it, like manganese and all those things from fur feathers and so on. But, um, I just like watching it. Like it's just entertaining, honestly. 
like if you guys watched a little while ago, if you follow me on um, Instagram or you watch my videos on the Dog Dad page on Facebook or in the Raw Feeding 101 group, you saw a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago by this point, but a video of Horace uh, trying to figure out what the hell to do with a, a rooster wing that was completely intact and had feathers and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's entertaining to watch, you know? So, so there's that whole prey things. Um, I also like to feed um, some of the weirder things again, just for the personal entertainment aspect and the, it reminds you of where all this food is coming from and makes you appreciate it kind of thing where it's something like duck heads or chicken heads or something that, you know, really makes you look at it and go, this was an animal because it makes you feel that much more appreciation for, you know, for the fact that something else died so that your dog could, could eat tonight. You know, whether that's duck feet, chicken feet, something like that, whatever it is. The third thing would probably be, oh man, there's so many good things. You know, I'm like trying to differentiate between favorite things and most beneficial things, but I think I'm going to have to go with turmeric paste, golden paste, whatever you want to call it on this one, because without it, Wolken would have a really hard time getting around. It's such a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's helped him so much that I don't know he would, we'd have to be feeding a crazy amount of stuff with glucosamine in it or supplementing with synthetics or giving him medications or something like that. If he didn't have, um, golden paste in his regular rotation of foods. So golden paste is going to have to be number three. Uh, let's see here. Amanda has her question now. My bitch just had her pups. What's something I can give her to help with nursing and making sure she has all she needs? She just started her raw diet three months ago. If she just had her, her puppies, and here, here's my first recommendation. I don't give advice on feeding pregnant or you know just post-pregnant females very often because it's not something that I deal with very often and I like to refresh myself on the info before I give a lot of it out. But what I would say first is I would find somebody that does it on a regular basis and I'm shaking the camera. Somebody that does it on a regular basis like one of our admins in the Raw Feeding 101 group or one of our moderators like Diane Squibb who raises um, you know, raw fed puppies and has raw fed females or somebody like Debbie in the Raw Feeding 101 group that raises bulldogs and feeds them raw and feeds them. You know, talk to somebody that actually feeds their females raw pre, during, post uh, pregnancy and ask them what they are doing but if memory serves right at this stage because she is producing so much milk her calcium needs are going to go up because she's using so much of it and if she doesn't have enough calcium in her diet what her body will start to do is her body will start to pull that from as scary as it sounds will start to pull that calcium from places like her bones, which is not a good thing, obviously. So I would be upping her calcium amounts at least a little bit. You know, again, talk to somebody that's doing it on a regular basis to get more accurate amount information. But with the heavy demand, especially if she's had a large litter, uh, the demand that she is having on milk production is really taxing her body with her calcium. So she's going to need more of that to keep up with milk production. So, and not have it start pulling from her bones to keep up with that milk production. So that's about as far as I want to go right now without giving refreshing information to myself because I don't do it very often because it's not a very common topic for me. But again, more calcium and talk to somebody that's doing it on a regular basis, like one of our moderators, Diane Squibb. And I'm having a hard time remembering Debbie's name, Debbie's last name, Debbie Laster. 
something like that. Uh, if you want to shoot me a message on Facebook, I'll find her name for you. Um, but that's what I would do is I'd up the calcium and I would talk to somebody that's doing it on a regular basis. Uh, let's see here. Jamie is saying, yay, twins. I'm a twin too. They should really totally check out going to uh, Twins Days in Twinsburg, Ohio, at least once in their lifetime. The festival is so much fun. Yes, congratulations on the new nieces, Jasmine. That's awesome. Although I'm not, I'm not happy for you that you don't have any sleep. That sucks, but the nieces are nice. We also had a new niece recently. She was born on Ariane's birthday. So it was like her best birthday present ever. I freaking love coffee. I love coffee. Uh, let's see here. Sarah's saying, how would you deal with a puppy who had yet to tolerate any plant matter? Uh, he gets eggs, kefir, tripe, and other weird organ meats, but we can't keep plant matter down in any form. The vet is okay with PMR. Um, what I would look into, if I were you, and tell me if you've already done this because you and the puppy's been raw fed for three to four months now. Have you tried grinding it with other foods? Like, have you tried getting something like kale ground into uh, any other food that you're feeding in ground form, trying to, you know, kind of hide it, mask it, that kind of thing? Have you tried that? And on top of that, I would also look into a, you know, a digestive enzyme of some kind, because it may be that they've had so little, you know, none, no plant matter whatsoever and no carbs that it could be that the amylase, which is the enzyme that breaks down carbohydrates, plant matter, stuff like that. It could be that they've had so little, no plant matter carbohydrates in their diet that their amylase production is so low that it's having a really hard time dealing with that. So adding in something like a digestive enzyme that is going to have amylase, which is again, the digestive enzyme that breaks down those carbohydrates may help them deal with that plant matter, those carbs better. So I'd try adding in a digestive enzyme and I would try hiding it in other foods and doing it slowly, increasing it over time. That's what I would try if I was you, Sarah. Uh, Klaus saying, I just subscribed to Raw Feeding 101, section three at the moment. Awesome, Klaus. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, happy but really anxious about changing my 13-year-old pug to raw food very soon. Uh, what are your main advice for beginners? My main advice for beginners, if I was in your situation, Klaus, is with your anxiousness, I would go through section two again. Um, go through section two, the overcoming mental barriers section. There's, let's see. Well, we don't need to do that. There's several different videos. You know, I think there's like seven, eight, nine videos, something like that in section two. And it addresses a lot of the anxious factors and getting yourself over those mental barriers. So I would go through section two again, and I would just continue forward because where a lot of your anxiousness, and when I say keep going forward, I mean keep going through uh, the course that you guys can find at rawfeeding101.com. Uh, keep going through the course because where your anxiousness is coming from is your uncertainty, and your uncertainty is coming from your you know, lack of education. And that's not me being quote unquote a dick. <laughs> it's just being able to observe things over time with people as people learn. And once they get the base level information down and they see, you know, like, okay, this really isn't that hard. And there's really some basic things that I need to know and do. A lot of that anxiousness just lifts away because they have that base level education. They have that base level knowledge. And then what it comes down to once you've done that, once you've gone through the course is just what you'll hear later in the videos in section seven, the actual transition section is you just need to do it. You just need to get past that first meal. You just need to feed the first meal and realize that everything is going to be okay. And once you get that education down, once you feed that first meal, the vast majority of your anxiety is just going to go poof. 
because you educated yourself, you've done it, you fed a raw meal, all is well, and you can just keep going forward and keep going through the weeks, keep going through the steps. And before you know it, your dog is transitioned and you're on the other side of this thing and nothing bad happened. So my main advice would be to just keep going through the course, get to the end of it. If you want to watch the entire course before you transition, you know, go for it just to have that much more knowledge, but it's ultimately going to come down to getting that base level knowledge and just taking the plunge into that first meal and just feeding it and getting it out of the way so that that nervousness goes away. So those are my beginner's tips. Uh, do, 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 do. Jasmine is saying, awesome, Jamie, so cool, talking about the twins thing. Uh, Alyssa Bailey, Sarah, are you feeding a blend of veggies or one type at a time? That's so strange. Uh, let's see. That's a good point, Alyssa. Amanda is saying, thank you. I will reach out to the administration. Great. I appreciate it. You are welcome, Amanda. Again, Amanda, a go-to in the Raw Feeding 101 group. If you, It doesn't matter if you're on the computer or if on your phone or whatever. There should be a section that you can see at the top that says members. And if you click on the member section, there should be an area right there in front of you that lists admins and moderators. And one of our moderators is Diane Squibb. And I don't know how fast she'll be able to respond because I know that she works in the medical field and she works long hours, but just send her a message saying, you know, uh, Scott told me that you raise raw fed females and litters. Do you have any advice about what to do at, at this stage? And if you want to make a post in the group about it as well and tag me, then I will also tag Diane, um, Diane Squibb, who I was just talking about and Debbie, one of our, uh, former, not former, I guess. she took the raw feeding one-on-one -on -one course and trans transitioned seven dogs at one time. So now all of her <clears throat> puppies, dogs, females, everybody, they're all raw fed and she's had raw fed litters now. So I will tag those people. If you want to make a post and tag me so that I can tag them for you. Uh, let's see here. Sarah is saying tried grinds it aggravates the issue. Interesting. He has a defect in his stomach lining that causes food to build up in a hole and block an acid valve. Grinds are a no go. Okay. That's super interesting. I would, if you have a problem that's that serious, then I would also talk to the vet when considering this, but I would really look into the uh, digestive enzymes then because those additional digestive enzymes are just going to make it that much easier for your dog to digest their food. So I really, really look into the digestive enzymes. You need to quit whining. Such a whiner, such a complainer. So we're about 10 minutes away from the end of our session here. I'm gonna try and get through our topics really, really quickly and then uh, do the giveaway for our book. Let's see here. Also tried grind, frozen grinds that only helped a little bit. Yes, yeah, Sarah, look into the digestive enzymes. Really, really look into them and talk with your vet, especially since they're okay with uh, Premonta Raw. Look into um, the digestive enzymes and bring that up with them. Uh, Christine is saying, I have to go take the dogs for a walk and then bed. Talk later. Happy birthday again. Good night. Thank you, Christine. Good night. Enjoy your walk with the dogs. Uh, let's see here. Again, just pulling out my topics for the day. Okay, this is something that I wanted to talk about really quickly. I probably would have bloviated a little bit more if we had more time. But this comes back again to the discussion about you know, communicating with people in the community and having differences and suggestions and everything like that. Um, there's one of the biggest questions in our community, other than should you or should you not feed um, vegetables and how do I transition? Those are really the two biggest questions. But one arguably, you know, third biggest or even one of the first two questions is what's better? Pre model raw or barf? Which one should I choose? Which one is right? Which one is wrong? Hello, Ashley. Nice to see you. And I think that we should be as civil as possible with these discussions and approach it in the same way that we should be approaching everything else, which is in a positive, 
educational, supportive way. And luckily here in, not here in, but in my group, Raw Feeding 101, that most of you are a member of, and if you're not, go and join. It just type in Raw Feeding 101 dash, dash learn to feed raw in Facebook, join the group and I'll add you in. Um, luckily we don't have a big problem with that because we're pretty good about keeping things civil because we just don't tolerate uncivil behavior and we boot people that can't keep themselves from doing it. So luckily we don't have this big of a problem, but I did want to bring that up because it still happens. It's still a really big topic of conversation. And even though that we have lots and lots of info coming out about vegetables and fruit and fermented vegetables and so on and so on, there's still a huge massive debate and lots of, you know, heads pounding together over this fact. So I wanted to let you guys know that after was it well i had to look at the calendar to see what date it was i shouldn't have to do that tomorrow's my birthday but it's been like at the end of this year it'll be two years since i started the dog dad youtube channel something like that and i've never done a video on this before because i didn't quite know how to put it but i have filmed and i'm currently editing a video on Prey Model Raw versus Barf, and what I feel is the right and the wrong choice. So be on the lookout for that video here on the Dog Dad channel. So if you're not subscribed already, click subscribe and then that little bell that shows up next to it so that you get notified. But I think that it's it's time to finally put this issue to rest because. I think that it's a really important topic, but it's also, you know, I'm not going to go that far into it. I'm not going to go that far into it, <laughs> but I want you to guys to be on the lookout for that video because I want you guys to be able to share that when that argument comes up, because I think that it's something that really needs to be addressed and answered. So please be on the lookout for that video. What I'm hoping is that that video can be a go-to resource for the entire raw feeding community and they can share it every time that that argument and conversation comes up because it's something, especially for the beginners that they need to hear an answer on. And unfortunately right now, a lot of what happens is they just see a lot of people arguing about it. So hopefully this can turn into a very valuable resource for new and upcoming fresh and raw food feeders. So I wanted to bring that up really quickly. Uh, let's see here. What other con what other things, Okay, there's one. If we have time for that, we'll address it. But let's look at our comments here. Uh, all four pauses saying my golden retriever is. <clears throat> I needed the coffees. Uh, my golden retriever is 20 pounds overweight and we are trying to get him to lose weight. And he is on a barf rod diet. What is the best way to start the diet to get him to lose weight? All right. Warning. I am going to pull up. A, and actually I'll do something better here. I'll also turn off the Wi-Fi on my phone. I'm going to pull up a window on the computer here so I can share a link here in the comment section. So if I glitch for a second, that's why. The feed isn't going bad. I'm just bringing up a window so that I can share something uh, because I've actually done an interview about this exact topic. So do, again, apologizing if you guys are seeing any bouncing or skipping on the video it's just really really temporary where is it where is it okay and we don't need to hear any audio from that all right so what i'm doing right now is i am sharing an interview video that i did with ronnie lejeune um from perfectlyrawsome.com and raw feeding university here on facebook and she is very, very much into dog health, dog exercising. She's extremely knowledgeable in, you know, the food stuffs that we always talk about. Um, she's even recently started regularly blogging on perfectlyrawsome.com. So go and check that out. But this interview that I did with her was specifically about exercising dogs. And I'll give you a little bit of a teaser, but I want you to go and watch that full video that I just dropped into the 
uh, comment section because it's really, really, really important. And there's also a couple of other pieces of info like other resources, uh, Facebook groups, stuff like that, that you can go and join to have support throughout that weight loss journey. But the very first thing coming from this interview with her, the very first thing, if you're not already doing this, would be to start a regular walking schedule with your dog that looks like this, where every single day, whether it's rain, snow, shine, whatever, you know, put on the clothes you need to put on. Uh, if they need to have, you know, a little puppy shoes, whatever it is, for at least, I believe it was three weeks or two weeks or something like that. This is why you need to go and watch the video. For at least two to three weeks, go and walk your dog every single day for at least 20 minutes at their pace. You know, let them do their thing. Let them walk as fast as they want to walk. If they want to stop and sniff something for a second, that's great. But go and get your dog out and walk with them for a 20 minute period and do that for two weeks. Then go for two weeks and do the exact same thing. Walk for 20 minutes, but walk at a little bit faster pace and have you direct that walking. Again, do that for two weeks. So that's your first two pieces of info. Uh, get them walking every single day, get them exercising, give them that mental release, the physical exercise, the additional calories being burned. Um, do that for two weeks, let them go at their own pace. Then after that two week period, go to the exact same thing, but you're directing the pace and it's just a little bit faster than what you were doing before. So they can't just stop and, you know, smell the roses, et cetera, and let them build up their, their exercise abilities a little bit. But beyond that, I want you to go and watch that video because I want you to see what Ronnie has to say. I want you to go and join the community that she started on Facebook that supports this kind of thing specifically. It's about, you know, weight loss and healthy fit dogs. So go and watch that video. If you can't find it from the link for whatever reason, send me a message on Facebook. It's under Scott J. Marshall II, or you can send it to Dog Dad or whatever. I just want to make sure you get that video so you can go and watch it because we need to get that weight off your puppy. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Jasmine is saying, I love learning and researching. I am always open to conversations about different raw feeding methods. And that's the attitude we should all have, Jasmine. It's the attitude that we should all have. I'd love that. Uh, good for you for creating a resource for others to use. Love it. Thank you, Jasmine. I appreciate it. <laughs> Another resource. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of them that I made, right? There, there's this guy. There's the, the course. There's this here meal tracking journal. There are a few of them. And of course, here the Dog Dad channel. But thank you, Jasmine. I really like, yeah, views and stuff on videos are super cool, right? It's nice to see that people go and watch your videos. But what I really want is for there to finally be a solution for this problem of PMR versus BARF. Like, and I really think, I really think that I have finally found the ultimate, which is wrong, which is right solution to this whole PMR versus BARF thing. I want it to be the go-to resource for people to go and watch, especially the beginners, because they need to hear something certain that they can go with go and have confidence with. So thank you, Jasmine. Uh, to, Alyssa saying happy early birthday, taking off for the, uh, take the day off for yourself. I don't, I don't really take days off just because I just like what, I just like my life. Like I don't need to take a day off from my life because I just, I just love my life. So I don't really need to take a vacation or a day off, but thank you. I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, let's see here. All right. Let's go ahead and do our, now that we are at the end of our hour, let's go ahead and for the five of you that stuck around until the very end, let's have the audiobook giveaway, okay? So if you watched my video this morning about the cows that had no respect, no respect for the fact that I was trying to do a live video and they're just making all kinds of noise, I gave you the answer to this question. <coughs> How old am I turning tomorrow? And the first person that puts the comment into the comment section of how old I am and gets it right, will get a free copy of the audiobook of Raw Feeding 101. 
So how old do I turn tomorrow? How old will I be tomorrow? The first person that puts it in the comment section gets gets a free audiobook copy. And now I wish that I had like queued up the Jeopardy music or something like that for me to just sit and watch and wait for. <laughs> Jamie says 31 and Jamie is right. So Jamie gets a free copy of the Raw Feeding 101 audiobook. Tomorrow, September 5th, I will be turning 31. So which was which is a lot better than when I turned 30. I basically pouted, let's just be blunt here, and hopefully YouTube doesn't get mad at me for this, but I basically pouted like a little bitch because I was like, oh no, I'm 30. No, I'm 30. So 31 isn't so bad. But Jamie got it. Jamie is right. I'm turning 31 tomorrow. So Jamie, send me a message on Facebook because I know that you have me on Facebook because we talk all the time on there. Send me a message on Facebook and I will shoot you a code that you will put into the Audible platform and you can download, download that wherever. You can put it on your computer, you can put it on your iPad or tablet, you can put it on your iPhone, Android, doesn't matter. Anywhere that you can get the Audible app, you'll be able to listen to the Raw Feeding 101 audiobook. So there we go, everybody. Uh, actually, no, 31. I think Jamie got it. My phone is lacking. <laughs> yes, it is 31. So thank you so much, everybody, for another awesome live Q&A session. Remember that there's only two days left, two days left for the discount on the Raw Feeding 101 course. Make sure to check out the Raw Feeding 101 book on Amazon. You can find all this stuff at rawfeeding101.com slash RF101 stuff. But most importantly, Remember that you don't have to be perfect to be an amazing dog owner. You just have to do your best every day and try and prove as you go forward. Peace. Have a great week, guys, and I'll see you Friday on the live stream in the Raw Feeding 101 group.